I'm Jim Delahunty. I'm a dairy farmer in North Tipperary, close to the border of Hockley, near the town of Burr. Um, I'm making 109 cows on a milking platform of 30 hectares. I have an old farm of 29 hectares on which I run a replacement dairy enterprise. Um, since 2004, the dairy farm has gone from 40 cows to 109 cows in the current year. Um, the herd had doubled in size from 2006 to 2010, from roughly 50 to over 100 cows. Um, I done it all through homebred stock for two reasons, biosecurity being one, and I, I wanted to have complete control of the genetic makeup of the herd. Um, I exited beef in 2008. Um, I also decided to purchase coho when it became available as an insurance against super levy. Um, all cows and heifers were put in calf to dairy AI. I kept all the heifer calves and the herd has a high EBI of, of 132 so all stock were of good quality. So I reared all those calves and calves are down at two years of age so effectively the dairy herd snowballed on the basis of that. I'm now back selling replacement stock again because I'm generating more replacements than I require for the farm. Um, culling is done on, uh, normally the top one or two cell count cows are culled. Then there is a combination of late calvers, um, low EBI cows uh, would be, and then solids per cow production. The lower producing cows on solids production would be, would be thought less of. Prior to 2004 I had put down uh, a lot of farm roadways and the water infrastructure for up to 100 cows, the water infrastructure is now becoming an issue again because once I went over 100 cows, I'd have to relook at that. But the farm infrastructure of roadways, um, I put on a lot of roadways in in the early 2000s. So uh, in terms of buildings, the the um, I extended the milk power. It's a 10 unit between a bigger bull tank. Extended the collecting yard. I also increased slurry storage and. Uh, cow accommodation on the farm. I went for conventional buildings. It's, it's a single labour unit farm, so I found conventional buildings more labour efficient. Concrete and cubicles as opposed to um, outdoor pads, etc. I, I went for conventional and concrete buildings. I decided to expand um, based on an analysis of the business through Chagas Profit Monitor. I've been doing Profit Monitor for the last 13 years and it became very obvious that at that time the poorest performing enterprise was tillage. I exited tillage and increased the beef enterprise um, and because quotas were too restrictive. And when quota became available, I, I didn't exit beef because the margins were far greater in the dairy enterprise. And milk price obviously is a massive influence on this at the moment. Milk price has a huge influence. Um, I'm stocked at 3.65 cows to the hectare on the grazing platform. So at a high stocking rate, uh, with high volumes per hectare, milk price would have a huge effect on my overall business. As well as to that end, I'm trying to come up with plans to deal with a poor milk price year. Um, I plan to reduce the demand on, on the dairy platform um, by reducing herd size and try and reduce the cost of production in that particular year. But it's based on the fact that I will have a good replacement enterprise that I can return the herd back up to 110 at short notice because in 2010 we saw how quick milk price recovered and I need the herd back to where it was originally. Key helps really was the physical plan that I done with Michael Hogan. It set targets. Um, I knew where I was going. Um, likewise, even financial planning. Um, I, I had a plan in place. Overall, I've invested in the order of 300,000 over an eight year period in capital investments. So you couldn't face into that kind of numbers without having a plan. That, that couldn't be done on an ad hoc basis. Um, the challenges, the particular challenge that sticks out in my mind is by introducing a lot of young cows into the herd, the output of the herd dropped for a four to five year period because there was a high percentage of young cows milking in the herd. So to that, to that end, um, that had a huge influence uh, over a four to five year period you're into tens of thousands of a drop in output which uh, has obvious implications for that needs to be factored in in terms of trying to meet your commitments. I suppose I was trading a low profit beef enterprise for a high profit dairy enterprise there was still a reduction in incoming receipts when the cattle went out of the system you're used to this money even if it was a low profitable business you had this income at certain times of the year there was a two-year time lag where 
the heifers that were coming on stream before they produced and the cattle were gone so that had to be planned for and uh, there had to be a definite plan in place in order to maintain the business because i increased stocking rate i suppose one thing i did do was i improved my grassland management um by grass budgeting weekly so i was now able to feed more stock with a cheap feed source so on a per hectare basis the um profit of the dairy enterprise has increased by over 40 percent in eight years so i suppose that's the that's the asset test of, uh, and that's the main motivation behind the expansion. For somebody who's considering expanding their herd, um, the first protocol has to be an, an analysis of the current business. Um, to that end, I found the Chagas Profit Monitor um, very helpful and it gave me a complete analysis and a breakdown of my business. Um, thereafter, I would have done physical plans and financial plans with Chagas and I found these very helpful that you had a roadmap uh, setting out where you're going when you're making huge investments and you're kind of trying to figure out how to meet your commitments etc at least you have a definite plan that you're working to and definite targets set for you to me and to my current farm i suppose because i bought dakota i've tried to expand post 2015 um and to that end i suppose that i have some of the, the benefits reaped from expanding uh, in time, what I would hope to do is look at look for other opportunities within the dairy industry in Ireland because we're looking at such a huge increase in output in the country. I would be looking to capitalise on some of that to replacement sales, to maybe getting involved in other ventures of dairy of dairy farms. Um, I, I do see a, a very bright future for dairy farming. And I think we have the skills through both financial and grass budgeting and the, uh, the EBI that we have, we have all the necessary components, it's just a matter of applying them. I suppose, I suppose everybody is different in what they can handle. I find myself at 110 cows with 50 replacement livestock units. Um, yes, I'm near, I think I'm pretty much at what one man can do. Um, it's something we're going to have to become more efficient and better at is labour management and I for one have a lot to learn there. But um, I, it's, to my mind, I suppose, danger put figures on it, but around 150 livestock units per labour unit would be a kind of where it's at. Um, and I suppose after, thereafter, I suppose, to justify taking on labour unit, if you're, if you're profitable enough, who knows, you may be able to do less, labor, less livestock units per labour unit and you'd have a, an easier life. So I suppose in some respects it's down to profitability of the enterprise as to whether you can afford to pay labour or not.